Hello and welcome to another video in the series Data Stage Interview Questions and Answers. Today in this video, we are going to discuss questions around other processing stages in Data Stage like the Sort Stage, Aggregator Stage and so on. As always, if you like this video and the other videos on our channel, then please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's start the video for today. So which two stages other than the transformer stage can be used in data stage to remove duplicates? So we know that we can do this functionality, implement this logic using the transformer stage variables. So this can be done using the transformer stage, but data stage provides many other easy stages which can be used to perform this logic easily. Now the first one is obviously the remove duplicate stage as the name itself suggests it's a stage which can be used to remove duplicate data in your source. So this is a fairly simple stage to be used and this is how the stage editor window looks like for this stage. So you can just define your keys based on which you are identifying the duplicates and then there's an option to define whether you want to retain the first duplicate of the series or the last duplicate in that particular group. Now this first or the last, so that is for example, you have four records which have the same key values coming from the source and now you want to remove two duplicates. That means you want to retain one of the records and discard the other three. Now which one do you want to retain? The first of this group or the last record of this group? So you can specify using this property. Now how will it identify the first record and the th and or the last record? That can be done by setting the ordering in your uh, in your input page so you can define the order by so if you want to retain the uh, record with the maximum timestamp you can per perhaps order by your uh, timestamp column and so on so that would define whether your first record is the record with the highest timestamp value or with the lowest timestamp value so whatever way you want to do it and then you can come to this particular option and define whether you want to retain the first record or the second record now you need to hash partition your input data to be able to use this uh, stage correctly and then you have to set your sorting and ordering in the order in which you want it. Now another interesting stage that can be used to perform the same function is the sort stage. Now sort stage itself you are sorting the input data based on the key column values. So whatever you are sorting on you can define your key column values and then you have this option over here that says the allow duplicates is equal to true. So most of the time when your purpose is not to remove the duplicate values, you have to set this to true and that is the default value for this particular option. But then you have the choice to set it to false as well. So if you want, if you're already using the sort stage for doing sorting and using the other features of the sort stage and you want to remove duplicates at the same time, then you can use the same stage and remove the duplicates from your data instead of going for the remove duplicates stage. So these are two other ways in which you can remove the duplicates from your input data. Now what is the default data type for output columns in an aggregator stage? So aggregator stage we all know and we use it so many times to perform all kinds of aggregations like summing up the values or finding out the maximum, minimum and so on. But if we forget to change the output data type to the data type that is defined for our output structure then this is thing this is the thing that we have to keep in mind because by default the aggregator stage will produce the output data type of double so this is your output default data type that is produced by the aggregator stage but you will have a defined output structure as per your source target tra uh, tracking uh, documents and so on so you have to follow that structure so let's say that we have defined the output data type as decimal 10 2 in our output or target table then we have to use this particular property in the aggregator stage which is called the decimal output and define the precision and scale so we have to make use of this property so always keep in mind that the default data type is double so if you if you forget to change it or so on then you will get warnings in your data stage log and that is not what we want. We want our uh, data stage log to be warning free. So you have to remember this and make sure that you convert it into the proper data type as is required by your target database or your target uh, file structure. Okay, next question. What is the difference between sort and hash method in an aggregator stage? 
Now I'm sure that most of us as developers have not even uh, paid attention to this, have not even noticed that there is uh, there is something called a method that needs to be chosen in an aggregator stage. Now this is where the option to choose the method appears in an aggregator stage. By default, this is set to hash and there are very few instances wherein we need to actually change it from its default value of hash. But first we need to understand that what is the difference between the hash method of aggregation and the sort method. Now hash method is basically used when you have a limited number of distinct groups. So for example, let's say we are going to group by, we are performing some aggregations on a group of products. So we know that there are a limited number of products that the organization has. So there may be 100, 200, 1000 or whatever. But we know that there is a finite number of products that we will be grouping on. Then we have to use the hash method. Now how it works internally is basically that it stores all those group values in memory so let's say there are 100 products so there would be 100 groups they would be stored in proper uh, in the memory whatever aggregation we are performing let's say we are trying to find out the maximum in within that group of products then the maximum value or the maximum quantity that was sold for that group of product that output value would be stored in memory when all the groups have been processed and the aggregations have been completed then the results would be outputted. So that's, that is how the hash method works. So everything is, is get, gets stored in the memory and once all the computations are done, then the results are produced. That is why it works with a limited number of group columns. But let's say there is an instance when they have when we have multiple grouping keys multiple distinct values that might occur and we want to perform some aggregation on that that is the instance when we want to use the sort method so sort method you need to pre-sort your input data and that would uh, that would improve the performance of the aggregation and that is why we have defined it explicitly as sort method so sorting the data is a precondition for this method to be applicable it works with a, an unlimited number of groups or if you have a high number of distinct values in your data then you have to go for sort method so most of the time it is uh, the aggregator is left uh, at its default value of hash but if there is an instance where you have this particular scenario that you have a large number of distinct values then you have to go for the sort stage sort method and aggregation okay now let's go through this question it says that a job is designed to calculate the number of cars sold in a day and the total transactions of the sold cars so how many aggregators are needed in the job design so what we are assuming here as that is that there are some transactions happening in a store in a day. In those transactions, uh, some cars are being sold. Now in one transaction, there might be multiple cars that are being sold. So number of transactions is simply a count of the transactions that takes place in a day. The number of cars sold in a day would be the sum of all the cars which are sold within all those transactions. So now we need to perform two operations. Our grouping key is going to be the day so the day or the date key so date is our key value on which we are going to perform the grouping and then we are going to find out the count of the transactions in that day and then the sum of the cars sold in a day so we need to perform a count we need to perform a sum now we know that an aggregator can perform these three uh, kind of operations it can count rows it can perform calculations and recalculations but an aggregator the count rows and the calculation and recalculation functions are mutually exclusive so you can either use the aggregator to count the rows or you can use it to perform the calculations or recalculations so in this scenario you would need to use two separate aggregators in your job design one to count the number of transactions and the other one to perform your aggregations as in the sum of the cars sold in a day so this is what we need to understand that the same function cannot be performed the count rows and the calculation functions are mutually exclusive in an aggregator stage okay another scenario based question source data contains students with the marks in different subjects design a job to find maximum marks in each subject and the student who got the maximum marks so we have some source data design and there are multiple students 
and they're multiple subjects so each student let's say there are four subjects and there are four students so each student has got some marks in all those four subjects what we need to do is find out the maximum marks obtained in each of the subject and the student who got those marks so there might be multiple ways of designing this job but this is an interesting way and a fairly optimum way of doing this so what we have done is use the sort stage and use an interesting property and a very useful property of the sort stage which is the key change column. So we are grouping by the subject because we want to find the maximum marks in the subject. So a key value on which we want to group by is subject. And then we simply want to find out the student associated with that with those uh, marks which are the maximum marks so we are grouping by subject and then we are finding out the maximum marks so what we can do using the sort stage we can sort on the subject and group by on the subject that is hash partition on the subject column then we can use another column which is the marks and we can simply order by in a descending order on the marks column so if we order by in a descending order that means the the record which has the maximum marks for that subject along with the student name would be the first record in that group of uh, group of uh, students with the uh, using the getting the marks in the same subject so subject is a key column we have let's say four students for each subject so we have four records now in one partition of a subject let's say the subject is english so english four records we want the record with the, which has the maximum marks. So we are sorting by the marks. So the record with the maximum marks, let's say it's 100. And that gets at the top. So we have to sort in a descending order to get the record with the maximum marks at the very top. And then we can use another interesting property here, which is called the create key change column. Equal to true. So every time what this property does is every time your key value changes it sets the key column it produces an a default output column and sets its value to one or zero for the other records it sets it to zero so every time a new record is produced a new key value comes in your data so your subject is english for the first record in that your key change column value would be one there would be four records for the subject english after that the subject changes to mathematics then for the first record in that group would have the key change column value as one and we have to make sure that the first record in that group is the one with the maximum marks and that is why we have ordered by the marks column in a descending manner so here you can use the key change column and then you can use a filter stage or if you are already working with a transformer stage to filter your data identify that column which has the key change column value of one so you'll get that record which will have the maximum marks in each subject and the student name along with the uh, and the student who got the maximum marks in that record itself that student name would be in as as a part of that record itself so this is how you can use this interesting feature create key change column so this is an important uh, feature this is a very important very powerful and useful feature of the sort stage and data stage so this is all I have for today and so there would be more videos coming up and we would be uh, covering more scenario based questions as well as questions now related to the execution of data stage jobs and debugging and performance tuning of the data stage jobs. So thank you for watching the video today and please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such videos. Thank you and goodbye.